I started out making sculpture. That was what I was first introduced to. In other words, you know, as a, as a child, obviously, you have in the States, in the United States, you have classes of art class. And they're, they're never, first of all, they're never really taken very seriously. It's like, you, know, you have math and you have science and then you have art class. And I remember liking making things. That's all I remember thinking, I kind of like this, it's fun. When I was uh, about 17 years old, maybe 16, we had a neighbor and she made sculpture. And one day I was there and I started to ask questions about it. And she said, she gave me a piece of stone and some tools. She said, here. And I created my first work, which I still have. And it just seemed to just like, I got more and more interested in the process. I then lived in France where I carved very large stones, an old hammer and chisel, very traditional, many traditional tools. Then, I think so the process was very natural, in other words, to answer your question. I just kept on gravitating to sculpture. One work leads to the next. So it's, it's, it's particularly hard to encapsulate 35 years of working to be specific about how you arrive at one place or the other. Um, this particular series of work, which has been become a, a, a very significant body of work, evolved out of wall pieces that I had begun to do. And a friend, a painter, was visiting my studio, and he and I started discussing the idea of, you know, well, what about taking it back off the wall, putting it vertical, and editing certain aspects visually. And I thought, yeah, that's interesting. And I did it. And it led to the very first of these works. And it felt a door opened. And I knew that. I knew that, okay, huh. And it's not in any way to negate the work you've done before. Or, or in any way diminish the work before. But it seemed all of a sudden like all this work I had done led to this, and that this would end up being something much more, um, have a greater longevity of expression, meaning, I don't mean as, an, as a work of art, I mean that I had a long way to go with it. I had a lot to explore. I mean, there's you know, certain kind of heroic qualities to bronze and steel, and I think certainly the idea, the longevity of it, uh, and the fact that, for example, with bronze, as we know, when works are outside and they, the patinas change, there's an organic quality that I like, yet you're not, you don't have to worry about the disintegration of the object. I'm more interested in the idea of a work physically lasting. I'm, I like the idea of the, uh, the durability of a material, but I like the fact that it also changes. I would, I would say almost that's really to a large extent what I see. But I also not only see the space within, I see the space outside of it. So I start to see more and more this, the integration of an object into space. But I'm, I'm pushing the boundaries of those spaces at the moment that I'm creating the work. And that's why I use these very minimal sort of forms, ultimately, because I think I wanted to rely on the, the fact that they're so simple. I knew in order to arrive at something, I'd have to push it and I found that challenging and, and, and it works for me. I think some works work well in a monumental scale and others will not. I think some works work better on a smaller scale and where if you were to take a very large work and shrink it, it may not work as well, so conversely. 
frequently things that are works that are, are called monumental, I don't think are monumental in scale. I think they're simply large. And the presence and the power is that they're large. So my interest is how do you arrive at the right scale for a particular environment? And that's very different. And so that the concept of monumentality is not about size. It's about finding the proper integration of a particular scale work in a specific environment.